men. Y'all remember when y'all was screaming, bring back the women who pack lunches and rub backs. Bring back the women like my grandmother. You want to know how to bring back the women like your grandmother? Watch this. As he said, I was married for 66 years. And uh, some picked up my chicken on the side. I didn't have no chicken on the side, no girlfriend either. I had a three in one. I had a girlfriend, I had a love, and I had a wife. If you got a good wife, she could be anything to you you want her to be. So now if you have a good wife, treat her like she your wife. That she your honey, that she your baby, that she your sugar, and that she your sweetheart. And I start taking money off and made her a queen for a day. Do anything. She didn't have to cook breakfast, dinner, or lunch, or nothing. Sometimes she didn't even have to make up the bed, but I did that for her. Then the men used to call me, boy, you just hen pick. I said, that ain't no, no problem as long as you being picked by the right hen. Yeah. And women like compliment. And she would look, come to you and say, how this look? You, you just, <clears throat> she fit to go change again. She put on another dress, you know how to, <clears throat> she fit to go change again. When she put it on and come and tie and stand right and see, how this this look? You better say, baby, you look good in there. And then you fit to get out the house. If you got a good wife, she dressed to please you, not anybody else. Show out for your wife. Now, the way you show out for your wife, you go to the drugstore, buy one of them mushy cards. And then when you buy that card, you put your mush on it. This is the big card right here. You take one and you put a big piece of money under that one and you put it under the pillow. And now is here's the last one. When she turned that pillar back and opened that car with all that good talking, mushy stuff, and that big bill in it, you ain't got one more thing to do. Look up to heaven and say, Lord, give me strength. I know there were a lot of horror stories about grandma cheated on, but that was not all grandmothers. Some of our grandfathers treated our grandmothers like this man here. And if you want us to start treating y'all like our grandmothers treated our granddaddies, y'all gonna have to bring this type of treatment back. Take notes, men. All you gotta do is put it under the pillow and lay back and wait. Black Ram 313, back at it again, you know why? Well, it's because this is therapeutic, man. Back again, another video hits. Another therapy session outside in this cool, brisk day doing a video in the car because it's quite windy outside. It is the Windy City, but it's not called the Windy City because of the wind, uh, contrary to popular belief. But I need to do this in the car. Well, we could say the mobile office, I guess. But anyway, I'm not here to talk about that. You seeing the video. And I'll give this subject probably, I'll, I'll go with a five. I can go with a five. Average, average. And she seems like a sweet person to a degree. Um, but when we look at things through our red, I'm sorry, real peel lens, we're able to see the cap. We're able to see, although the presence of sincerity, we can pick out the insincerity or at least the lack of awareness that the subject usually has because of its solipsism, only thinking of itself and never anyone else. The subject truly lacks empathy, a conscience, and some may even propose a soul. Anyway, not getting into that. I want to just go through this video and point out some things. 
the first thing I want to point out is that traditionalism never really served you as an individual unless the whole goal was offspring. Let me break that down. My grandfather, traditional man, my father, traditional man, my grandfather worked in the steel mill back in the 20s and 30s. Real hard labor to make ends meet. And he did it for his family. And that's honorable. Yeah, that's honorable. But that doesn't mean such a thing served him. So let's look at this for a minute. Traditionalism. You work hard in the steel mill or wherever you're working at. But I'm talking about back then. We'll talk about now in a second. And you brought all the money home. In other words, you paid all the bills. And wifey stayed at home and took care of the children and kept the house clean. I'm not saying that that's an easy job. But it is not equivalent to working in a steel mill. It is not equivalent to working on an oil rig. No equivalence. So essentially, you provided a way for the subject's biological imperative to be actualized and realized. You provided a way for its dreams to come true because we know that they want the little ones. Biologically hardwired and won't so. So you make the subject's dreams come true and you're the lucky one, huh? <laughs> you're the lucky one for having it, right? You're the lucky one for having to work so hard. You're the lucky one to have to do all of that heavy labor. And then once the little ones are adults, they really don't appreciate it. Individual results may vary. Then you fast forward to today. When you have the average subject that's a ran through two, three children's by a few different baby daddy I. The V is just out of order because of overuse. The attitude stinky. The subject's aura and persona bitter. How is that a good deal being traditional? And even if you find such a one that doesn't exemplify such a thing, it's only a matter of time when the subject will do so. How does that work for you? How does that benefit you? Not to mention, you know what you get for all of your hard work and labor and raising somebody else's offspring. Well, infidelity in papers in the mail saying that the subject is no longer happy with you. That's what you get. That's today's age. This is where we've come to. This is where we should have to say pause. Traditionalism ended for the subject and it's never coming back. And it should end and never come back for you as well. Why would you want to play house today? Can somebody give me a reason? And I'm open, man. Listen, this is a discussion. In the comments section, tell me why would it be a good thing for you to want a traditional situation with the untraditional subject? And in case you didn't know, the subjects are all H to the Izzos. Why pay for what someone else got for free? Why pay her to stay? Why pay the subject to stay? When you can pay the subject to leave. Why would you want to do that? And sometimes they look better going than when they show up. And in some cases, just as good. In some cases, they can come back if you so desire. It's easy. And before you start talking about, oh, this pay to play Ram. Again, ninja, because you can't do anything with this real pill. I don't care how red you are. Take your wisest red guys. Take your wisest dating coaches and they wouldn't last five minutes with the real pill on a debate. Mm -mm. You can even take the pill that is uh, the dark pill, what they call it, black. Yeah, 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 yeah. Take that one. And although that has some truths in it just like the red put it against the real and the real wins every time swiftly no one could beat 
the real pillars in a debate about this stuff. It's impossible because the predominant ideology due to dominant intelligence that real pillars possess is that if they're all HOs, what else matters? Wives, a thing of the past. If they're all HOs, then why does any of these things matter, whether it's a flat rate, over time, or whatever you want to use? It doesn't matter because the subject is an H to the is to the O. So none of those things even matter. So what are we talking about here? Why would you even want to play the traditional role with someone? One thing that the pastor said, that I thought was key. He mentioned how his wife would try on different outfits to see if he liked those outfits. And then he would pass up on a few and, you know, let her know when he thought that this was the right outfit for the occasion or whatever. And then the pastor went on and say, hey, his particular wife dresses for him. Makes sense. That's traditional. But that doesn't happen anymore. He said, if I'm not mistaken, they've been married 60 years. Well, that was a mentality from 60 years ago. Do you think your wife, your girl wants to dress to please you? Or dress so different eyes, especially of stranger in the social media age can gaze upon the subject. You don't enter the equation. And if you do speak on something that makes you feel uncomfortable, well then you're met with all kind of words saying that the creature has been delivered from traditional expectations and values. Meanwhile, you better keep yours. How is that a good deal? How? How is that a good deal? How is that working for you? How would that work for you? It doesn't. Just another example of how we need to evolve mentally and get away from all traditional thoughts. They're H to the Izzo's. What we need to do, what you need to do, is always treat the subject accordingly. Always, without exception, without exception, because nine times out of 10, there are no exceptions, especially in America. And even if the subject isn't jumping on and off the carousel, more than likely the subject is single for a reason and almost impossible to deal with. So let not your heart be troubled. Take the real pill and deal with the creature as you should. She said, hey, you want to get, you know, your lady to, you know, react in a certain manner then be this traditional man like this guy who's been married for six, six years old, this old guy in the pulpit. Be like him. Nah. Can't be like him. Because you don't have subjects. That have the type of mentality that his wife has. So you cannot get the same treatment. Don't deserve it, nor should you. <laughs> that was comical, man, but I, I give her credit for trying. Give her credit for trying. The subject wants our mind to be stuck 66 years ago while its mind is liberated toward the future. You stay in your traditional role while the subject is liberated from its traditional role. Come on, man. And I still don't understand to this day how working hard and paying all the bills is worth somebody making you a sandwich. Can you all explain that to me? And I'm starting to think that guys just say stuff like that because they don't want to feel like, well, what the truth really is, they don't want to admit to being taken advantage of. That's not a deal, fellas. The subject stays at home while you work and you get a sandwich when you come home. Even if it's a steak. <laughs> Brothers, that's not a good deal. Especially with today's subject, who 
that's on social media 90% of the time while you're going to work has two or three thuggos in its phone, a couple of exes that it keeps in contact with, and girls' night out is common, and you know what happens on girls' night out. It may start hanging out with the girls, but it's not going to end up that way. The subject will tell you that. Can somebody please explain to me, Black Realm 313, how traditionalism is worth it? Can you guys explain that? Anybody, any one of you, explain that, how it's worth it. It wasn't worth it back then, and it's not worth it now. But the goal is to keep your mind locked in this weird mindset, the same mindset that your uh, pastors and preachers and camp leaders want you to have, that traditional mindset that's old and outdated and needs to be revamped and you need to evolve. I've said enough. Black Ram 313, like, share, subscribe. I'm out.